Okay, so today I thought we'd look at another master game that concentrates on central control because I think it's very instructive. And this is what you should be trying to do in your games as well. And that is control the center, have absolute emphasis over the center. All your pieces should develop with the intention of controlling the center. And so in this case, it's Eugenio Torre, who is an absolute legend player from the past. Uh, against uh, the Dutch player uh, Cornelius van Wigerden. So Tori opens with e4, and van Wigerden decides to go into a sort of modern defense. So it's hyper modern. So this is the bishop. He's intending to fianchetto the bishop to, to g7. Um, so Tori immediately decides to control the center. And so if Black is going to, to uh, approach his idea of trying to combat the center with uh, Fianchetto, then we should immediately seize the opportunity and take advantage and uh, get right into the center. So um, Tori was probably thinking it might go into Roy Lopez, like Black could have played, of course, e E5, but instead, if he's going to, if Black's going to Fianchetto, then we just dominate the center and get right out with D4. So Black Fianchetto's. And then we have a situation where um, it, it, we have to get our minor pieces developed. So we already have the, the superb pawn chain right in front. And so what we do is we just simply go knight to f3. So adding, adding extra control over e5 and d4. And, uh, and we already have a tremendous, um, tremendous control over the center. So then what we then block responds with uh, e6. So again, trying to build up the pressure and, and support e5. Uh, so just, but it's a little slow and uh, could have uh, could have potentially played d5 here or attacked the center with c5, but uh, instead opts to go with d6. So we just continue our piece development, bishop to uh, e2. With the this game of, was of course played a long time ago and and uh, would have um, I think in the modern age with the advantage of computers and so forth I think bishop to c4 would have been uh, another option would have been another option because then we'd be targeting f f7 but still develop all the minor pieces into the center and also he gets ready to to potentially castle kingside and just really be really be safe. So then there's um, Van Riggerden plays uh, knight to f6. So going after the center. So he too is just uh, completing his, his Fianchetto development on the king's side and intends to get to king's safety right away. So Tori continues with n to c3. Again, um, having complete, this is an ideal setup in the center. So complete control over all the four central squares with the knights. And of course, still has the two pawn uh, uh, stronghold, which hasn't been undermined by black yet. So black castles, very safe move. Uh, definitely a good idea in the opening to to get to <clears throat> get to get the king to safety. And Tori does the same. So now we start to see black really concede the center. And what I mean by that is he could play more aggressive moves. Could do c5. Already had the option of doing d5 and didn't uh, choose to take either of those so this c6 to me is a little slow and the other key feature of it is or drawback of it is that it's it's blocking the ability of his knight on uh, b8 to develop to a natural square which would be which would of course be c6 so again only staying on the third rank and, and really kind of conceding conceding the center, which in general is is not a good idea. So then we have um, Tori uh, developing his rook to e1, and this is this is a theme of of what you want to look look to do in the opening. So have your rooks to central files, really controlling the center and applying pressure on the opponent there. So. Black here opts for queen to c7, and in and of itself, it's not a it's not a terrible move in the sense that it does control d6, and of course, 
uh, more importantly, E5. So it has some purpose. But I think that uh, in, the, in the opening, your emphasis should be to develop the minor pieces. And so um, Van Wigerden could have, could have uh, opted to develop his bishop to g4, would have, been, would, would have been one of the options. And then potentially knight to um, knight at b2 to, to d7, uh, su supporting the structure in the center and, and, and really emphasizing the development of the minor pieces. But I think he, he wanted to uh, control e5 and really get his... his uh, his queen out of the path of the d-file. So Tori, of course, has noticed that and will uh, potentially look to to take advantage of that on, on the d-file. Had the queen stayed there, a natural place for the rook would have been on, on d1 for sure. So then we have um, Tori could have continued development. So if we go back a step, the, the, I was mentioning that the minor pieces should develop. So he could, uh, I, I probably would have opted to develop the, the bishop on c1. You really want to get the minor pieces out. Where where is a good square? I mean, potentially potentially f4, potentially g5. Uh, that's uh, open for debate and some computer analysis, of course. But either way, I would focus on on potentially getting that out. By um, n not doing that, he also retains the option if he wants of potentially fianchettoing on the queen side as well. So he could opt for uh, bishop to to b2, which is a possibility. Uh, again, facing into the the opponent's king, but but Tori kind of recognizes here that that Black is is being very slow with not only his development but his control of the center, and so with these pawns on the fourth rank, he takes advantage and goes right in with e5. So his his goal is to completely break open break open the center and and just start immediately applying pressure. So he's probably at this point kind of changing his game plan sort of midstream with the idea that that he's observing what black is doing and uh, changing what he's doing and saying look okay if you're if you're going to sit back like this then i'm just going to directly attack the center it does come with a little bit of risk in the sense that if this rook on <clears throat> on f8 were to come to to uh, d8 it would be directly opposing the queen so as we break open the center for example if there's a recapture here and a recapture here uh, th this queen could uh, potentially become vulnerable, and Tori has blocked in his where, and I didn't mention this earlier in the game. C4 might have been another possibility, and the reason C4 would have been good would be to control D5. So you always want to think about control over the center squares, in particular in the opening, uh, and that would have allowed his queen to potentially get out of this line of fire, much as Tori did here. But with the queen on C7. Uh, uh, Tori may be thinking of getting the rook to to c1 to directly oppose this queen and potentially put pressure on it if the center starts to really implode. But <clears throat> this e5 move is is signaling why Black's uh, slow development of this knight was is is such a problem because um... hey Donos yeah I'll take a look at that for sure. Um, so this knight had it been on been on c6 could have been potentially attacking uh the e <clears throat> the e5 square <clears throat> but now without that um tori takes advantage of that and just pushes so now black decides to take and white <clears throat> very wisely does not want this file opened right now because of the potential that the queen could could uh, come under pressure like rook to rook to d8 would be obvious if we were to recapture with the pawn so tori leaves the leaves the file closed for now and opts to recapture just simply with the knight and so now we see some really excellent central control the pawn is gone on this side on 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 um e4 but this knight is has moved into a much stronger position and of course has, has kept the the file closed as well which for the time being is is a very good idea so black wants to counter that and plays knight b to d7 threatening this this knight on uh, e5 and so what we do here is uh tori recognizes that the queen is a little bit vulnerable here and his last bishop uh, his last minor piece needs to develop so I was mentioning earlier that he could have played it earlier and gone to g5 or potentially to 
to f4. And so now he recognizes with the idea that the, the queen being on c7, bishop to f4 is a very good idea with now all kinds of uh, uh, potential discoveries. So the, the queen is immediately under pressure and black will have to look to, to see what they what to do about that. And so black um, gets, gets, I think, anxious about this and decides to immediately recapture the knight. And so we, it's Tori re, it simply recaptures with a bishop, immediately getting tempo on the queen. And that's a real theme in the opening. If you can play central controlling moves that also come with tempo, it's an absolute dream because you've got a huge, a huge development lead. You've got fantastic central control and you're getting basically free moves because this queen now has to reposition itself, allowing weight. Uh, a lot of flexibility in terms of in terms of what he in terms of what he does next. So the queen has to move, um, and Van Wigerden decides to go to uh, queen to b6. But what that does is it uh, again uh, allows White to to get another tempo. Now, knight to a4 is uh, is interesting because. Generally, you would not want your knights to to go to away from the influence on the center, but in this case, Tori is deciding to do this and bring it to the side with the potential idea of getting into c5, where it would again have very good control over the center and, and get to the to the fifth rank, which is very good. So the knight would be increasing in power. It does come with tempo on the queen as well, which is which is very very valuable. And <laughs> hey, Matthew, how's it going? And uh, and so Black has to waste a number of moves here, just moving around in the opening. So Knight to T4, and then the Queen drops back to where it originally started. So Black has now had to waste one, two, and three moves moving the Queen when he should should have been controlling the center and developing. So you see, this Bishop is still at home, and. Uh, and instead, uh, he's wasted three moves moving the queen. So an obvious thing for Tori to think about here would be uh, the pawn to c4. Um, with this knight missing from c3, uh, he's lost a little bit of the influence over the, the d5 square. And so c4 uh, could be an obvious choice if you can keep control over the d4 pawn. But it looks like, for now, uh, white should be able to do that with a strong bishop on e5. No, no pawn break right away on f6 to disrupt it, and also the queen supporting it as well. So Tori decides to do bishop to f3, and a real strength of this move is, is you see this pawn on, on e7 is weak. And so pawn on e7 is weak, so this, this rook now has additional influence on the, on the e-file. So black um, plays knight to d7. And again, I, I do not like this move at all. So he's trying to disrupt the, the uh, and get rid of the bishop on e5, but, but look at what's happened. So again, this is a piece that's moved twice. He still has his bishop trapped, right? So this does nothing to, when, when black really should have been figuring out where to develop that bishop to, so it could have gone as an example to to f5 targeting the the c2 square but instead he's he's moved another piece like he did with the queen black's gone to knight to d7 so it does open the attack on on the bishop but in this case tori decides to trade trade bishops and this is a good decision uh, because this this bishop on g7 has very very strong control over the dark squares in the in the middle so Tori says, right, okay, I will get rid of that. And then uh, it's just simply king recapture. And now um, now we, we get to the move that I was, I was uh, saying was probably a good idea earlier, which is c4. So we want to make sure that uh, Tori's thinking about how he, how he controls the center. And c4 just come, should come to mind right away. So we have good uh, control over the e-file with the rook. And we have the potential eventually, as the engine is pointing out here, potentially doing d5. But for now, we really want to control the center, play a strong developing move. And now the influence over, over d5 is very strong. 
So Ben Wigerton uh, plays uh, e6, uh, but again, another very slow pawn move when really he should be looking to disrupt the center. If you notice, the engine uh, is suggesting here knight to knight to uh, b6. And the reason is, again, it will free free the bishop, right? So allow his, his last minor piece to come out. It also offers the trade, which I don't think is particularly good for black because our knight is not in a great position right now. But it also uh, targets uh, c c4 because black is recognizing that this, or the engine is recognizing that this bishop needs to develop. And black could do that with the idea of also also giving us an additional headache of, of targeting uh, c4. But instead what happens is, uh, so e6, which which I think is, is quite slow. So again, look at this bishop, right? So it, it can't, b7, it's blocked on b7. He's moved his knight back to d7, again blocking it. And now he's given himself an additional blockage of, of playing e6. So where is this going to develop? So this is this is not very well organized by uh, the black side here. So white recognizes that if you have a knight, so the expression, the knight on the rim is grim. So if, if it's on the edges of the board, it has far less influence. How do we get that knight back influencing these center squares on d5 and e4? Just simply knight to c3. And so white has uh, much better control of the center. So now we're on move 16, right? So white has much better control of the center. Black still has this problem of where to develop the bishop. He's played too conservatively with the pawns that are still stuck on the, on the sixth rank. And so now we want to start thinking about how we might uh, proceed when black plays knight to f6, which is, is a good move. Uh, it, it uh, again brings the knight to more more control over these central squares and so it's in a much better position back on on uh, f6 so after developing all the minor pieces white should be looking at this and saying okay how how would we proceed and and generally the idea would be to to um, control the center with the rook so he's already got a superbly placed rook on e6 Tori opts for queen to d2 here, but I think another thing he was probably considering that I, I would have considered was queen to queen to c2. And the reason is the reason queen to c2 is good it primarily is the influence over the um, e4 square, right? So we do have that with our knight now, but we could we could additionally reinforce it. But more importantly, get the queen out of the way of the d file which would allow the rook on a to get to to d1. So but but Tori instead opts for queen to d2. So again, developing move and of course the rooks are now connected, which is exactly what you're trying to do. And here you see the the problem with um the problem with black's development because he's blocked in this bishop. So this is very it's it's very weak and substandard move. So just simply bishop to to d7. So now you're seeing the problems of black's development. So with, with e6, with the pawn on e6 and c6, this bishop is very sad. It really should be out here in the center of the board, somewhere somewhere down here, potentially fianchetto, somewhere where it could have more influence than it does. So white, uh, just simple, simple development. What's the last piece that white needs to develop? The rook on a1, get all your pieces into the game. And... Uh, so rook to to d1 and so then uh black uh plays uh rook to c8 again recognizing that his his rooks have to get into the game but um there's c8 is is not a bad place for the the uh, rook but black could have considered and if he had been able to stay on c c7 with the queen potentially get to this uh d file where it would be opposing the queen so rook to c8, it's um, it's hard to see what kind of influence he's going to get on there, but not not a terrible move. So now Tori says, okay, if this e file is so open, what should I do to to increase the power and control over the center? So this this is an unusual move. So a lot of a lot of people would would be it, this move would not occur to them, and 
it's it's a very interesting one. But but White here is simply recognizing that with the E file open, why not control it? Just get the rook up, prevent pawns from coming to the fifth rank, and again, it could potentially shift over and really start to target the king side. So now that Tori knows that the the king is on the as as castled on the king side, now he has a clear target of of how to proceed. So black plays b6 again, very slow, and it also doesn't do anything to really. Um, it does have some like slight control over the center with c5, but doesn't do anything to help his bishop development, and that's why this this move is so poor. And you see this a lot in in uh, developing players' games where there just isn't. The right idea of how to develop the pieces so b6 really quite slow and it's kind of difficult to see really why um why this was played to be honest i mean knight two if if the knight wanted to hop into d6 it it was it was not available anyway because of the pawn on c6 so it's it's, it's a little difficult to see why what what the purpose of black's move was so White immediately recognizes that he has he has a development lead, he has control over the center, and now just targets targets the king. So it's simply h4, and uh, really starts to go after the king side. So uh, White would have options like pl simply playing g4, getting the king to g2, and then getting this rook that's on d uh, potentially over to here and just just really increase the power of the attack. So black starts to get a little bit uh, a little bit nervous about this and immediately plays h5. And so here is uh, exactly the plan that I was talking about. So g3 comes in, and the white is likely looking to just simply get the king to to uh, g2 and uh, and and break. But we'll we'll see what what Tori's plan is. So black does uh, queen to e7 getting off the file um <clears throat> this next move by tory is is an interesting one and it's maybe not optimal so when your knight is uh on the four natural developing squares meaning c3 f3 f6 and c6 it's it's in its optimal position in terms of controlling the center so what you really want to think about um is you don't want to move a knight that's in that good a position unless there's a really, really strong reason. So you can see here, because of that, the engine in, in Tori decided to do knight to e2, obviously trying to, well, it does reinforce a d4, but more importantly, he's obviously trying to get to the to the king's side. But the the engine is is here recommending that the knight's already in a good position, so why not just simply why not just simply play b3 right so you reinforce reinforce c4 again kind of with this pawn chain um strong now you're emphasizing central control and leaving the knight where it has really good influence over these squares so if black's knight as an example were to somehow move we could get knight to e4 but instead of that tori opts for the idea of of knight e2 obviously drifting over to the drifting the knight over to the king side so black wants to is already starting to get very uncomfortable and, and is is almost immediately looking to defend right so so rook to h8 comes in um, trying to reinforce the protection on this back row but tori continues his plan with with knight to to f4 and so uh really really targeting the king here and really uh, making you so we were only temporary out temporarily out of the control of the center with e2 and now have much stronger control at f4 so this knight the thing to observe here is it has excellent control over d5 but also more importantly e6 and potentially h5 which is not of course in the center but is targeting the king but to me the main feature would be the the control over over e6 and so now black uh, again move the king, the queen. So this is what the fifth, I think fifth move at least that the, the queen has made for black. So this is why he has such a development disadvantage, because this could have this could have uh, been played very differently, and he should have focused on the development of his minor pieces first. So the queen has moved far too many times, and uh, in this case, Tori now starts to think about 
how to continue the attack on the opponent's position. So he knows his center is, is good already. So what's next? Continue the attack on the center. Queen of c3. The other good thing about this is, is that theme that I was talking about earlier in the game that the rook now opposes the queen, which is, is always going to be a potential threat for black's position. And, and the, but the other, the, other good, the other good idea of this is that if, if the queen is here, again, you want to make a move that, that accelerates your central control. So the queen will have not only points into the king and has this indirect pin on the, on the black king, but also continues its control over uh, d4 and e5. So black opts to, and we, I was mentioning earlier that this, that this uh, control over the C file is, um, wasn't an optimum place for, for the rook. So now he's opted to go to, to E8. So the machine here is pointing at E4. And, but the theme we're showing in this game is, is why central control is so important. So objectively, from, from engine analysis, it could be that, for sure could be that that a4 is is the right thing to do but um but instead um black uh, uh sorry uh, tori with white decides to continue the attack and just go right after the king so rook to to g5 is just immediately threatening putting all kinds of pressure on this position so black had recognized this earlier knew that potentially h4 uh, uh sorry h5 would be weak um, because of the potential capture there so he's got not only the pawn, which is of course pinned now, but the but the knight and the rook defending uh, h5. So black with the rook to h6, just reinforcing the protection on uh, g6, which is which is interesting. And so black, you can see the the balance of the game here. So white has got all the play, right? So black is just flat out defending, trying to keep everything together. So you can tell that things have already gone very, very wrong for, for Black's position. So in this case, White opts to go to d4. And this is a this is a really interesting decision. So this is again a move that as an example in my games, I've had I've had uh, um, trouble seeing. And, and it's very difficult for a developing player to see, which is that in a square that is controlled by so many opponents' pawns and Maurice Ashley has an excellent series on this called What Grandmasters Don't See. And the theme of that, of that position that, uh, or that, that course is they, we don't consider candidate moves that go into a square that is, is heavily controlled by the pawns. So what Maurice was pointing out in that course is that you should expand your sort of, <clears throat> I'll call it tactical vision, but just vision in general to say, maybe it is an opportunity. Look at the benefits that this move has, right? So it seems really scary because there are pawns attacking this, the queen's attacking this, the knight could potentially come across. But what we immediately notice is the central control, right? So in doing this, what Tori is saying is he said he's saying, I'm not worried about the fact that you have all this pawn influence over d4. What I'm getting in return is tremendous control over the dark square diagonal here but more importantly i just pinned the knight so this knight can now not move so normally this knight being in its best square to control the center has now become completely completely decommissioned by the fact that the queen is now is now pinning this so tori is saying i'm not worried about losing a pawn potentially i just want to go right after the king so black, of course, decides to recapture. And this is another really interesting decision where um, Tori is saying, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to recapture with the pawn. I'm going to recapture with the knight. And that seems, again, to developing player, this would be really hard to see because it seems like it can just be recaptured with a pawn, which is what black did. The reason this is such a strong threat, of course, is that is the queen f6. So if this is left here, we just capture with the queen on f6, um, capture here on f7, and black's position is is completely breaking down. So black has no choice but has to recapture. But now we see the weakness of all the queen moves that were played by black. So the queen never really got to an optimum position. Black wasted a whole number of moves. Um, moving the queen 
uh, un unnecessarily. And now Tori, after making the decision to get to the fifth rank with his rook, if you remember, it came up on the on the e file, just says, "Look, here's another tempo on the queen." Right. So now, uh, Black has some really poor options, right? Because remember, this this knight is now pinned. This bishop is vulnerable, and so Tori is recognizing that that with these incredibly strong rooks on the open file, um, this this bishop is going to be under tremendous pressure, and the queen again with tempo has to move. So, Engine's pointing out here that that queen to e six might have been better. It's closer to the king. It would would maybe offer some extra pr protection, uh, but it doesn't. I don't think matter a whole lot at this point because black has already um, really, really hurt himself by not developing properly. So uh, Van Wigerden uh, decides to do queen to c6. <clears throat> and now we have the free ability to to just simply take the, the bishop on d7, knowing that this knight cannot participate in the recapture. So Tori just simply captures there. And... Uh, material at least with regards to the pieces is now back to to even so after all that chaos in the center uh it's back to even but what this is one of the themes that a, a master will will do well is be willing to to liquidate the center as long as they have far better control over it so now uh what's coming next obviously is is well the queen is the, the other thing to point out here is that there's again yet another tempo on the queen right so the this bishop which is guarded by by white's queen is hit with um the this rook move is like a discovered a discovered attack on the queen so it again has to move but no matter what's coming next is because of this pin here what we're going to do is just simply play rook to one of the rooks to to uh d d6 and then it's queen capture there and it's it's over so the queen now has to move and then uh black decides to to do uh to do a uh to try to save the game uh with this move but uh, white doesn't fall for this tactical trick because if um, if rook if uh, rook recaptures here, then queen will simply be able to capture rook here, and then if queen recaptures, this pin is no longer valid, so the knight could recapture. So Tori knows this and does not opt for this, and instead says king of g two, and the game's over. So you can see the engine evaluation white up by six, which is like six pawns, six point oh nine. So just complete, complete dominance of the center with some excellent tactical tricks. We saw uh, the black side move the queen too many times, not focus on the center, not focus on development. So that is the power of the center.